Hey, welcome back again. This is John Buck. Uh, today I'm going to show you, continue our discussion of joint moments with an example for a very simple uh, uniform distribution of, of two random variables over, over a geometric area. Uh, this is, is similar to one uh, that my students will recognize as one we did in class. And I'm going to show you how we can just go through the mechanics of using the definitions to find the correlation and also to find the covariance. So, oh, wrong way. Next page. I, uh, I have the, um, the problem already specified. We're talking about a, a joint PDF that's one-third for the region where x goes from 0 to 3, and then y for each x goes from 0 to 2 thirds x. So the region has this triangular footprint shown here. Uh, I was not brave enough to do this live on camera, so I spent a little time before we started to make a perspective drawing where we're saying basically that we're talking about this blue triangle here with height one-third, that the, the PDF is is one-third in this blue region and zero everywhere else in the plane. So here we see that this sort of same footprint rotated around in terms of the x-y perspective. Uh, so, and, and as we said in class, that the rule for a joint PDF to be valid is that the volume under the PDF must integrate to one, which this one does, you can, you can show from geometric considerations. But the, the real point for today is we're going to now go on and compute two things, the, uh, the correlation and the covariance. And remember the correlation, which we abbreviate as Rxy, is just the expected value of the product of x and y. We just multiply the two together and do their expected value. The covariance, C of xy, is the cent first, uh, is a central moment. So I t subtract the mean from x and y before I multiply them. And y. And we saw that this is equal to rxy minus the expected value of x. Or if I'm going to use m's for means, I should be consistent. So let me clean that up. So that's rxy minus mx my. Okay, so that's the plan for today. Let's do the correlation first. So to just begin with the definition, r of xy, to compute that expected value, we take the integral from minus infinity to infinity of both x times y times the PDF evaluated for each outcome, dx, dy. But we can look at that, that footprint I showed you on the previous page and say, well, I only need to integrate x from 0 to 3 and y from 0 to 2 thirds x. Because outside of that region, this PDF is 0. Right? If I just flip back for a second, we said everywhere except this blue triangle, f of xy is 0. And so the integral will contribute, th those values of x and y contribute 0 to the integral. So I end up with x times y times, within this region, it's a uniform PDF, which is 1 third dx dy. And now it's just time to make our calculus teacher proud and prove that we remember how to do multivariate integrals. So I'm going to say I'm, going to, I'm doing the integral with respect to y here because x is in the limits. So I'm going to pull the, uh, the x out front. And I'll have the and, and I can pull the one third all the way out front. So I'll have the integral from zero to two thirds x of y dy. And then I still have the dx waiting for the results of this. All right, so this is one third times the integral from zero to three of x. And now if I integrate y dy, I get one half y squared. I've got that from 0 to 2 thirds x, and then all this dx. So at the upper limit, well, let me fill in the, the parts I'm still carrying along, so I have a 1 third, 0 to 3 of x. At the upper limit, I get 1 half times 2 thirds of x squared is 4 ninths x squared, minus the lower limit, but when I put in 0, zero for y, I get 0 dx. So if I combine and collect things here, I end up with 1 third 
times the integral from 0 to 3 of, let's see, the 4 ninths becomes 2 ninths, and I have x cubed dx. I can uh, buy myself a little more room here. And what I do, I guess I can pull this all out front. I can say 2 27th, the integral from 0 to 3 x cubed dx, which is 2 27th times 1 quarter x to the 4th from 0 to 3. So I could clean some things up. I get this quarter, become a 2, and leave a 1 there. Uh, so I have that's 1 over 54 and then at the upper limit I have a third to the fourth which is 81 the lower limit I have x to the fourth which is 0 uh, I recognize uh, this 81 is 3 times 27 this is 2 times 27 so I can actually factor a 27 out of each one of these uh, and what I'll be left with is 3 halves I mean, you don't have to see that all at once. You could probably just recognize there's a uh, in case I'm for my uh, correlation. I end up with the correlation of those two univariate random variables is or bivariate random variables is three halves. If you don't see the 27 all at once, it's not a big deal, right? You can pull out and say, oh, they both divisible by three, and then maybe another three, and then another three, and you'll you'll get there in the end. Okay, so it's just basically chance to 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 take the rust off. Your, your bivariate, your multivariate calculus skills is going to be important while we work with bivariate random variables. If uh, if, if you're having trouble, you need to uh, maybe get get a little tune up in the, the in the math gym, to get your calc skills back up to to speed. So there's R of x y. Uh, to find the the correlation coefficients, we need to find uh, the uh, we, we need the means, which we would need the marginals for, which we did in class already. Uh, so I'm not going to to go through all the steps in that. If we if we go on to that, just to remind people, by by doing the the marginals, we were able to integrate and find that for this uniform PDF over the finite region, the marginal with respect to x we got was equal to two ninths of x, two ninths times x from zero to three. And zero otherwise, and the uh, marginal for y was one minus one half y from zero to two, and zero otherwise. And I can sort of just to, to remind myself this first one then is something that's going from 0 to 3, that's a very quick and messy sketch, and the height will be 2 thirds. So this is a triangle. Marginal for x looks like this. Marginal for y is a triangle coming the other direction, uh, starting a little taller, but ending a little sooner. If that's 3, it should end here, trying to keep things sort of in, well, that's not a very good scale still. But just to give us a sense that each one is a triangle going in each direction. So the, the simplest way now to find the covariance function is to use the formula. If I want to find the covariance, which again is the central moment of how much these two things depend on each other, C of xy, again, is rxy minus the product of the means. Right, which is why we, just as a reminder, we saw in, uh, in the previous video that if R, X, Y, if X and Y are independent, this becomes the product of the means and this goes to zero. These two random variables, again, we, those in my class, we saw are not independent, right? The, the pro, and we can see that quickly right here, F, X, time, to be independent, the product of these two marginals would have to be equal to the joint, which was one third, and they're obviously not going to multiply out and give you a constant. They give you complicated expressions. So this is not... Uh, not independent random variables. We cannot assume the covariance is zero. In fact, if we get zero, we know we've made a math mistake. Hopefully, we're not going to make those kind of mistakes today, but it's worth 
worth having that as a sanity check to remember to think that that we know what the answer cannot be in case we get a mistake along the way. So we say, well, again, to, to use that formula, I need mx and my. So let's take a moment to calculate those. So we're going to look at the, uh, the moments here. So the expected value of x, the random variable x, is going to be the integral from 0 to 3 of 2 ninths x, which is the pdf, times x dx. Right, and again, just to to remind you where this came from, we're taking, we're taking the integral technically from minus infinity to plus infinity of f times fx of x dx. And this part here is the fx. This part here is just the leftover x. Okay, and then when I integrate from minus infinity to plus infinity, we saw on, on the previous page only from 0 to 3, th this is 0 everywhere except from 0 to 3. So even though I'm really doing an integral from minus infinity to 0 before this, and then integral from 3 to infinity afterwards, we know both of those integrals are 0 because of fx is, is 0. Right? That's too much talk on that. Let me just write that out quickly, especially for people who might be watching the video who haven't seen it before. If I'm breaking this out, so I'll sort of keep it going down the margin. What I'm really doing is doing an integral from infinity to zero of x times the PDF plus the integral from zero to three of x times the PDF plus an integral from three to infinity. Right? I can take any integral and break it into a sum of integrals as long as the limits cover the whole region. Oh, and there's a dx hiding over here. Right, the reason I chose this way to break it is if I go back to the previous page, what I saw is this is every, this is the only region where it's non-zero. So to really show, oh, too far, to show every step, I'm breaking it into three integrals and I've chosen these boundaries to get one region where f of x is non-zero, and then this region we know f of x goes to zero, and this region f of x goes to zero. So when that's done and I substitute for f x, I'm back to that expression I sort of jumped ahead to there. So that's sort of breaking it all down for you, sort of play by play. And so now, to find the expected value of x, I get the integral from 0 to 3 of 2 ninths x squared dx. This is equal to, I've got an x cubed, so I have, uh, what's it going to be, uh, the integral of that is 2 27th. So when I multiply that out, I get 2 27th, the integral from 0 to 3. Put in 3, this is 27. So I get 2 27th times 27 minus 0. So the expected value of x is 2. Make a little more room. We can do similar work to get to the expected value of y. Ah, oops, didn't mean to do that. Let me push this up a bit. So the expected value of y is again I'm not get ahead of myself for this one. I get y times fyy dy. I'm not going to break it down into three integrals, but again, I know the only region where this matters, if I refer back to the previous page, is from 0 to 2. Everywhere else, f of y is 0. And so I can just leave those out of the integral, and I can say this is equal to the integral from 0 to 2 of y. And now if I'm replacing f of y by what I had on the previous page, 1, half, one minus 1 half y dy. So when I integrate this, I'll get 0 to 2 y minus 1 half y squared, the whole thing, dy. So that becomes... 1 half y squared minus 1 sixth y cubed between 0 and 2, which is, well, y squared is 4, a half of that is 2, minus 1 sixth times 8, which is y cubed, and then the 0, both of these terms vanish at the lower limits. And so I've got uh, 2 minus 8 sixth which is, uh, not squeeze it too close to the margin there, I get 
That's the same as 2 minus 4 thirds, so that's 2 thirds. Okay, so I now have my expected value of x, my expected value of y. Let's open up a new page. Remember why we were doing this. Actually, go back. We're going to now plug in here for this expression, right? So if I make a new page to go on to to finish up my covariance calculation, and that we said just to reiterate the covariance of x and y is the correlation of x and y minus each of the means. Right, if I go back now, I can say, well, I found the correlation, expected value of x times y was 3 halves, minus, on the previous page, I found the, uh, right, the mean of x was 2, the mean of y was 2 thirds, and so this is 3 halves minus 4 thirds, which is 9 sixths minus 8 sixths or one-sixth. Okay, so the co covariance of these two random variables is one-sixth. So that's the, uh, gives you an idea of how uh, the uh, correlation and covariance are just computed directly from definitions, need to have good calc skills to do it and, and get to the right answer. Uh, you could also, if we don't, I'm not going to drag this video out, but if we computed the variances from the marginals, we could then find the correlation coefficient. If you want to uh, do that on your own at home, to practice, right? Remember, I'll remind you we saw in the previous video the correlation coefficient of x and y, of the two random variables x and y, is c of xy over the product of the variances times the square root of those two. And just so you can check your answer if you do this on your own at home, again, we just saw this is one sixth the uh, variance for x would be one half, the variance for y would be two ninths, and so I'd have the square root of that. So I have one sixth over the square root of one ninth, which is one third. So one sixth over one third is one half, which is a good sanity check. We know this always has to be within one. So again, I haven't shown you enough to do this, but if you want to practice computing variances with the PDFs I showed you a second ago, you could go on and find the variances. You should get a half for the variance of x, two ninths for the variance of y. When you do this, you'll end up with row equals a half for this PDF. Okay. So again, this is uh, another video for ECE 521 at UMass Dartmouth. The main point today was just going through some examples, showing the mechanics of how we calculate the correlation and the covariance for two random variables, for bivariate random variables. I'll talk to you next time. Thanks.